So now the next task we have is to decompose relations and normalize them into Boyce-Codd normal form. So how do we normalize a relation? We decompose it into multiple normalized relations. So you start with one unnormalized relation and you decompose it into multiple normalized relations. So suppose R contains attributes A1 through AN. A decomposition of R consists of replacing R by two or more relations such that each new relation scheme contains a subset of the attributes of R. All right, we're not inventing any new attributes here. Uh, every relation in the output here was one of the attributes of R, A1 through AN. And two, every attribute of R appears as an attribute of at least one of the new relations. So all of A1 through AN are represented in one of the new relations. That's what a decomposition is. So here's an example, the same hourly EMPS examples we had before. Snurwe, if you will. Um, it has functional dependencies. You'll recall S being a key, so S determines Snurwe, and rating determines wage, R determines W. Is it in BCNF? The answer I hope you'll realize is no, because that section, second functional dependency, as we discussed, causes a violation. R is not a super key. Because R is not a super key, it's not in BCNF, and also it means that W values are repeatedly associated with duplicate R values, right? We have R being eight multiple times, and so we have W being 10 multiple times. And similarly for R equals five and W equals seven. So we're gonna decompose this relation by simply taking that dependency, R determines W, and creating a table for it, RW. We'll call that the wages table, all right? And we're gonna remove W from the main schema, W being on the right-hand side of the dependency. So we're def left with snillerha in hourly EMPS2, no wages, and a wages table, R determines W, is a FD on that wages table. It's got two columns, R and W. And you can see that R determines W is okay because R here then is a key of the wages table. So are both of these relations in BCNF? The answer is yes. On the left-hand side, we have S determines Snullerhe. Okay, that's still true, right, from our S determines Snullerhe that we had before without the W, right? S is a super key of the left-hand side, and that's not a problem. That satisfies BCNF. And on the right-hand side, R determines W also satisfies BCNF. So both of those relations appear to be in BCNF. Now, not all decompositions are good, so you shouldn't just use your decomposition wand willy-nilly. You have to use it wisely. So let's look at some problems that can happen with decompositions. There are three of them to consider. The first one is that it may be impossible to reconstruct the original relation after you decompose. Uh, that would be bad, right? We don't want to cause a decomposition that loses information. Such a decomposition is called a lossy decomposition, um, and what we want are lossless decompositions. Fortunately, in our Sniller example, that doesn't arise, and we'll see why. A second problem is that dependency checking may require joins. That is, some of our functional dependencies from F, in order to check if they hold, we'll have to join together the two tables that we decomposed just to check the FD. And that would be pretty expensive. It means that any insertion you do requires a join to check functional dependencies. Fortunately, this is also not true in our Snulua example, which is good. Um, but it will be true in other examples we'll look at. And then the third thing is that, of course, if you decompose one table into two tables, then some queries will span those two tables and require a join, so they'll become more expensive. So for example, if we put ratings and wage in a different table, then if we ask how much some person earns, we have to actually join the Sniller Huh table with the rating wage table, right? Uh, so some queries will become more expensive, and that's inescapable when you do decompositions. So we'll worry a bit less about number three for now, although keep in mind that if you uh, have queries in your workload that need to access those that data frequently, um, you might need to do something about that in your schema, and you perhaps wouldn't decompose. So there is a trade-off here between these three things and the redundancy that we're going to remove by uh, decomposition. For an example of a lossless decomposition, we can simply go back to the ex running example we've been using from hourly amps. Remember, we decomposed it into hourly amps 2, which is snullerhe, and wages, which was ruwe. Okay? And when you join those back together, the natural join is on the column R. Remember, on the left, S was a key. So there's one row in hourly amps 2, snullerhe, for every row that was in the full table, snullerhe. Okay? And for every row in hourly amps 2, when we take an R value, when we do the join, we're essentially doing a lookup in the wages table, and that lookup will give us exactly one W value. And so really what we're going to get in the output is one row for every hourly EMPS2 with a wage attached to it, which of course is what we started with. 
So there's some intuition there that this should always be lossless. And it is lossless in this example. It's lossless in general. Now let's look at an example of a lossy decomposition to get some intuition there. We'll start with this table ABC, two functional dependencies. A determines B and B determines C. And we'll use the second functional dependency to decompose the table. So we decompose it into AB on the left and BC on the right. Okay, and you can see that the common attribute is B. So the natural join of the two is gonna be a join on B. And you can see what's gonna happen. There are two entries with the value two in the B column. And when you join the B column from both sides, you get four matches, right? Two of those matches were not in ABC to begin with. They're the ones highlighted in gray here. That's why it's a lossy decomposition. We don't get back ABC. We actually get back a superset of ABC with some extra junk in it. And lossy decompositions, in fact, don't lose data. They generate bad data. So lossy is kind of a funny name, but that's what's going to happen with the lossy decomposition. So let's formalize this. First, we'll formalize the definition of a lossless join. Um, the decomposition of R into X and Y is lossless join with respect to a set of functional dependencies F. If for every instance little r of capital R that satisfies F, the projection of little r into X join the projection of little r into Y equals R. Remember that an instance little r of a relation R is just a state of the table. It's a set of tuples that have appeared in the database at some particular time. So for any such set of tuples in R, um, this would be the case. Now it's always true, whether lossy or lossless, that little r is a subset or equal to the join of the projections. When it's actually equal to, then the decomposition is lossless join. The concern is that little r might be a subset of the join of the projections, which is to say the join of the projections introduces extra junk, like we saw in the previous column, uh, slide. Okay. Now you can take this definition, you can easily extend it to a decomposition for three or more relations. It's just a nicety. We can stick with two here. The main thing to keep in mind is it is essential that all the decompositions we're going to do for dealing with redundancy have to be lossless. We're not going to screw up our database here. We're not going to generate spurious values. We're always going to make sure that we avoid problem one that we listed before and we can join up our tables and get back the original data. Now, Let's look for a test for losslessness that we can apply. So a little theorem here, the decomposition of R into X and Y is lossless with respect to F if and only if the closure of F contains one of the following two functional dependencies. X intersect Y determines X or X intersect Y determines Y. What is this X intersect Y business? This is the join keys for the natural join. The common attributes after we decompose when you put them back together, that's what you're joining on. The join columns should either determine the left-hand side relation or they should determine the right-hand side relation. And what that's going to give us is that kind of lookup table type behavior we saw in the example that we had a couple slides ago with our, um, our uh, ratings and wages. So from our example of the previous slide, decomposing ABC into AB and BC was lossy because their intersection was B and B was not a key of AB or BC, right? B had duplicate twos in it. And because it wasn't a key of either side, it gave us this multiplicative join where the twos turned into four copies instead of two copies. Now here's a useful corollary to our theorem. If you have X determined Z holds over R, and X intersect Z is empty, so the left-hand side and the right-hand side don't share attributes, then the decomposition of R into R minus Z, take away the right-hand side of the FD, and XZ, just the columns from the FD, that's lossless, because X is therefore a super key of XZ, okay? So X and X is the overlapping attribute between XZ and R minus Z, right? So that is a lossless decomposition. That's exactly the decomposition we were using in our BCNF example. X is rating, Z is wage, okay? So we have RW. Clearly, rating intersect wage is empty, so that property holds. R determines W, and R intersect W is empty. So we can decompose into Snillerha and Rua, and by this little corollary, that is lossless, okay? Because R is a super key of Rua, which is what we really described intuitively just a few slides ago. So lossless decomposition is nice, but unfortunately there's more trouble ahead, okay? So let's look at a slightly different example than we had before. It's our same table ABC, but we have different functional dependencies now. 
um, A determines B and C determines B, we're going to use the second of the functional dependencies to decompose, giving us AC and BC. Okay. When you join these back together, it's going to be lossless because the common attribute of the two, the intersecting attribute is C, and C is a super key of the table BC because C determines B and C determines itself. So when we join them back together, we get back our original table. It's a lossless decomposition. Great. The problem that remains is that we had this dependency, A determines B, and now the column A and the column B are in two different tables. How will we enforce that dependency? We're going to have to do a join in order to enforce it, and that's going to make every update expensive. And that was the next problem we were worried about. So all is not necessarily well.